Welcome back. As a reminder, you're supposed to choose a speech of national importance from anywhere in history. Find out about the person who gave the speech and why the speech was important at that time and why it's still important today. And then a line or two that's important to you and why. These are examples of speeches that were important in our history. You can choose any from this list or find other speeches that are important to you that are not on the list. You can always check with me if you're unsure. But basically, any speech by a national figure that's been given in our history, if it means something to you, it might mean something to someone else. Now you can fill in the block on your Merit Badge workbook, or you can do a conference with me and describe this in person or over the internet. The most important thing for me is for you to express why it's important to you and explain why it's important to you in your own words. In requirement 7, we're going to talk about the branches of the federal government. They're established by the first three articles of the Constitution. We're going to explain why or how the citizens are involved and the checks and balances between each branch of the federal government. Here's the display of the three branches. The legislative branch, which is in Article I of the Constitution, is the Senate and the House of Representatives. The second article of the Constitution talks about the executive branch. That's the president, vice president, cabinet, and all the federal agencies. In Article III of the Constitution, we have the judicial branch. Specified in Article III is the Supreme Court, but the other federal courts are supposed to be established by Congress. These are called Article III courts. The executive branch is established by Article II of the Constitution. The president is in charge of the executive branch. The executive branch handles the cabinet and all of the things to implement the laws of this nation. So it's the largest branch because it includes all the military and anyone that's working in the federal government outside of the judicial or legislative branches. So the FDA, all the people that work there for food safety and inspections, all of the people that work at TSA, they are all part of the executive branch. The executive branch is affected by the people by voting for electors to get them elected. And many people serve in the, ele in the executive branch in the military. It's check and balances on the other branches. It nominates the judges, the president does, and the president can veto laws enacted by Congress. Congress was established by Article I of the Constitution. You have direct election of your senators and congressmen, so people have a direct role there. And Congress passes the laws. They can override the president's veto so they can check his power there and they confirm his judges. So they have a role in who sits on the judiciary and they can check his power of nominating judges. Article three of the Constitution leaves a lot of leeway because it allows Congress to set up the Article three courts. Initially, they did not specify how many justices would be on the Supreme Court, and it varied up until 1869. Since then, it's been consistent. Although President Roosevelt tried to increase the number of judges because he didn't have a lot of vacancies to fill, and it's been hinted that maybe we wanted to try to change it again, there's a lot of resistance to changing the tradition from 1869 that we have the the nine justices that we have. Okay, the federal judges can only be removed by impeachment, and that's that's where the check and balance of Congress comes in. They can impeach them to remove them. They can also uh, verify the nomination. The president checks the court system by nominating them, but because they're in their positions for life, that's where they have kind of a check on the other ones. Also, the judicial branch can declare laws unconstitutional. 
because there's so many court cases, the Supreme Court can't hold them all. So we have what we call Article III courts. These are the courts of appeals and the circuit courts which rule on laws before they get to the Supreme Court. Only when those courts are in conflict with one another or appealed, the cases get to the Supreme Court. Every state has two senators. The members of Congress are based on the population of the state. We check the population every 10 years with the census and sometimes congressional representation moves. Since Georgia has been growing very quickly, in the last few censuses, we have gained congressional representation in Congress where other states have lost. The projection is that we're going to remain the same this time and some of California's representatives may switch to Texas. In this requirement, you need to write a letter to one of our senators, either Senator Perdue or Senator Leffler or your member of Congress. Mine is Stacy McMath, but yours may be different because you may live across a congressional boundary. You write the letter on a topic that's important to you in the news, and you'll wait seven to 10 days to get a response back. If you don't get one, fine, but if you do, the response and your letter you wrote is included in your packet for me to approve for your merit badge. Good luck, do your homework, complete your badge, and I'm looking forward to signing them off.